Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Today's show is Stress Reduction and Mindfulness Meditation. Hurry back and join us. I'm your host, Marsha Florence, for Just Ask. Today's show is Stress Reduction and Mindful Meditation with Dr. Donna Rockwell of the Michigan School of Professional Psychology. Good morning, good Dr. Morning. Rockwell. Good morning. How are Thanks you? Thanks for having me. Good, good, good. Now, you know, that was a mouthful for me to get out, so <laughs> I need for you to, to tell everybody your titles and all that good stuff, because I gave them the short version. Sure. Okay. I'm a professor at the Michigan School of Professional Psychology, where I teach mindfulness meditation to our doctoral students, and I'm also a clinical psychologist in private practice in Royal Oak, Michigan. Okay. I also write a column for Ambassador Magazine that appears in every issue, and it's entitled Being and Becoming, and it's about um, how to be alive and live effectively and efficiently and happily in our lives. Okay, okay, see I couldn't have got all that out, so thank <laughs> you. Okay, now today we want to go into the fact that there's a lot of people who are going through cancer situations, whether it be breast cancer, uh, prostate cancer, or various types of cancer. And I noticed that uh, we had an opportunity to read an article of yours in the Sharing and Caring okay, newsletter. And so we asked you to come today to give us more insight on the stress reduction and mindfulness meditation. So let's start off with a little bit about yourself and how did you come about this type of program? Well, interesting that you asked me that question. I used to be in radio and television myself. I worked on Capitol Hill for CNN during the early days and at the White House. And I used to travel with Reagan to um, Europe to the economic summits for CNN. So I was a pretty much type A, um, high-powered sort of person. But I felt that, in a way, happiness was eluding me, that there was something missing. Mm -hmm. So I kept looking and looking, like, what, what is it? And I came upon meditation as this way of sort of quieting my mind and getting more connected to myself. And I was surprised at what a great difference it made in my life. Okay, all right. And a lot of people don't realize <coughs> that meditation, yoga, or even to me, a full body massage, yes. is one of those things that we really need to incorporate in our lives, but we sometimes think, oh, that costs too much. Oh, I could never do that. So what do you say to the fact that if a person feels as though those things are something that they shouldn't do, but we feel that that will help them? You know, so what do you give note to that? Well, the interesting thing is that um, with meditation, it's free. In other words, we have our breath with us 24 hours a day. And what mindfulness meditation really is, just to cut to the chase for people so that they could understand it's something very doable and um, immediately implemented, is it's about bringing your awareness from being lost in thought to our breath. We spend most all of our life either catastrophizing about what might happen in the future mm -hmm. or bemoaning what happened in the past. It is extraordinary, if you stop and look at it, how much time we spend at both of those places, past or future. Okay. The point of mindfulness meditation is that our minds are most peaceful when we're in the present. Mm -hmm. So the instruction is simply, when you realize you're caught in thought, come back to your breath. Cut the thought and return to your out breath. That's the letting go breath, and it mm -hmm. actually trains the mind to learn how to relax. So when you say cut the breath, is that actually like inhaling, exhaling, or just thinking process? How does that It's come? really the thinking process. Okay. So what you're doing is, say you're um, walking about during your day, and you realize that you're obsessing in your mind about an argument you had with your b best friend, Susie. And all day long, you're just thinking about what Susie said to you, mm -hmm. and what you said to Susie, and on and on and on. Mindfulness meditation and being mindful is the ability to say, 
I'm not going to think about this anymore. I'm ruminating. I'm constantly going back over and over again in this mm -hmm. loop. I'm going to cut this thought and return to my out breath. Okay. And the more we do that during the day, the more we're actually creating a whole new neural network in our brain mm -hmm. that follows that lead. Okay. If you think about it, most of the time we're like swept away by thought mm -hmm. and we feel that we're not in the driver's seat because we're not. Mindfulness meditation helps teach us how to start driving our own car again. So in other words, we can think what we want to think. We okay. don't have to be swept away. We can return to the here and now through the mm -hmm. breath mm -hmm. to this moment. Now you said that so beautifully, so I, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, and, and the audience knows so I have to crack the joke in a way. Is that why you're so calm? Okay, okay. I, mean, you I just, think you're so. Just, you're really, you're just as calm, and you delivered that, that, that piece, that whole piece in, in, like in one breath to make us think to calm us back down. So do you think that if a person uh, starts off so-called with a bad day, if they take out a, a, a moment or two and start to, is it meditate or is it to, like you said, cut the breath and move on from that? I mean, because you can have a bad day at home and it escalates by the time you get to work if there's no coffee in the coffee Because you're ruminating. Right, so whatever happened earlier on, you fuel, fueling, fueling it. it right with and then it, it gets extension a lot of times in management uh if the manager's having a bad day then the staff is going to catch it but how can you stop somebody from saying i had a bad day at home so i'm going to affect everybody here at work well mm -hmm. like you're saying you're you said you feel my sense of peace and calm imagine mm -hmm. if that's how the bosses were mm -hmm. and this is starting to be used a lot more in corporate america teaching employees employers the whole Google's very much right. into this, right. um, how, to, how to be calm and create a work environment mm -hmm. that's conducive to creativity and, and doing good things for people. Well, just what you said, uh, in short, I think that we should have it in, um, in the job or workforce anyway, because if you're working in a corporation, if you're working in a government office and stuff, you're stressed out if you are, are working amongst the public and you're doing um, work dealing with the public every day, you have to prepare yourself mentally because of the type of work you're doing, especially if it's human service work. Human service work is really stressful. Burnout. Definitely, definitely. And we don't have outlets to let us know that we can take a break and come back to it, not in the same day, not in the same week, not in the same moment. That's why this is so incredibly helpful and amazing because it's 2,500 years old. This goes back before the Buddha, you know, which okay. is the person given all the uh, credit sort of for meditation. But this is ancient. It's, it's sort of like, are we forgetting our wisdom the more we become um, progressed along this road of technology? Or did we know more before about how to be calm, how to be settled, how to relate to one mm -hmm. another before okay. we got all this other influence between us. So the idea that you can all during the day simply come back to your breath to mm -hmm. calm down mm -hmm. is a wonderful gift and as you point out can really change the workplace. And I'd be happy to show you a technique or two so that people could understand how. Okay, well we're going to take a break. Well, we're going to take a break and come back and you'll see be, be more calmer ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys are much too much. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them and bust them. Beat them. The smallest them. moments can have the biggest beat impact on a child's life. Let's get a little bit rowdy. R-O-W-D-Y. Take time to be a dad One more today. Time. Oh, those boys are much too much. Those boys... And welcome back to the second half of the show. For those of you who are just not joining us with Dr. Donna Rockwell, uh, we're doing a show called Stress Reduction and Mindfulness Meditation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but a lot of times, especially in the cold months, we are depressed. We are disappointed about things. We're in the house all day, got a job that's really nagging at us, pulling us. We need to find a way to channel our energy to go back to being positive people and happier people at that. So just a moment ago off camera, uh, Donna was making me very happy. So I wanted her to share some things with you as well so that you'll know that, you know, we're not just here talking between the two of us. We're actually trying to help you out as well at home. Okay. All right. So I had to get that out because a lot of people wonder sometimes, how come Marsha's so hyper? But like I said, a moment ago, I was feeling a little, little blue there. 
Okay, and then you just brought me back to the light. Okay, <laughs> okay. So tell me something. If we're trying to get people to better understand that you can actually de-stress yourself by meditation, mm -hmm. what would you suggest that they do? Well, there's a very simple meditation. It's called the Five Breath Countdown, okay. and it was taught this summer when I went to a convention by a professor at Harvard University, so it comes very well um, backed up. And I can do it with you now okay. if you'd like. Mm -hmm. So the idea of it is that we focus on our out-breath. The out-breath is called the letting go breath, mm -hmm. and that's the breath that actually allows the mind and the body to let go of anxiety and tension and come back to peace and homeostasis, which is how we normally are. Okay. When we're just with our breath, we're calm, but when our minds are racing, that's where we get into trouble. So the idea is that you're focused on your out-breath as it goes out and dissolves. At the end of the out-breath, there's a tiny little gap, and then the in-breath occurs. At the end of the in-breath, another tiny little gap, and then we focus on that long, slow, dissolving out-breath. The idea is that the out-breath lets go. Mm -hmm. The in-breath is more associated with hyperventilation. That's what mm -hmm. makes us anxious. So we don't focus on that breath. We really focus on that letting go okay. out-breath. And that is the real trick. Mm -hmm. So the idea is follow the breath out, tiny gap, in-breath occurs naturally, tiny gap, and then out-breath. And what you do in this particular meditation is you count backwards from five through zero on the out breath. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to do it with me now, okay. if you'd like. All right. I'm gonna count out loud, but mm -hmm. you can count in your head. Okay. And I'm gonna use my hand to show the breath so you can get it. Okay. All right. All right. So it goes like this. You close your eyes, you sit comfortably in a chair, wherever you can find at work or at home, just for five short breaths, and it looks like this. You count backwards on the out breath. Five, Four, three, two, one, zero. And then you open your eyes. Wow. I, you know, I'm going to be honest, now, I didn't close my eyes because I was following you, but. I was following the, the breathing and I was just calming down as I was listening to you. So I wasn't asleep, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. It but really, I, really. I, but I, it just that very moment, just listening to you, and I was in my eyes were at half math, I was starting to calm down. It's okay. incredible because it really does settle the busyness of mind. We don't understand how mm -hmm. powerful our thoughts are. They say what you think you become. So if you're thinking anxiously all day long, you will be anxious. Mm -hmm. If you are able to cut thought and return to breath, you're really calming your whole system down. And as we were also talking about at the break, if you don't have stress reduction techniques integrated mm -hmm. into your life, you suffer from cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. heart disease, strokes, um, hypertension, cancers. It's terrible mm -hmm. what happens to people right. because of stress-related disease. Mm -hmm. This is one way to keep ourselves healthy mm -hmm. and to become proactive in our own health. Is the, do you think that's where people had started to get involved more with um, yoga and, you know, more uh, holistic care type methods? Yes, and you know, yoga is not easy. Mm -hmm. And people wouldn't be continually doing it. It seems like there's more yoga mm -hmm. shops than there are Starbucks right. now. It's so popular, and it's because it works. You know, meditation is like yoga of the mind, so it's really all the same thing. It's training the body to slow down. And okay. when we can establish a sense of stillness mm -hmm. within ourselves, we're so much happier, and we're so much more at ease. Mm -hmm. Even the cancer patients that I do this mm -hmm. with, at different hospitals report back to me that they can go into the MRI machine now, that they can feel more comfortable going for chemo. Because what they've discovered with learning how to return to their breath mm -hmm. is that in this moment, right here, right now, nothing's wrong. Okay. okay. And we can enjoy it and mm -hmm. appreciate it and have gratitude. Now, I'm going to ask you, so where do you think if a person wants to 
meditate more or less, especially if they're working. Mm -hmm. Do they need to take a moment out every day at a certain time to meditate, or do they prepare themselves in the morning before they go to work, or what do you think? You're very intuitive, okay. I just want to mm -hmm. say. You, you get it down. <laughs> That's absolutely right. A really great idea is before you even get out of bed in the morning, when the alarm goes off or even before, to just lie in bed and be with your breath like I just described mm -hmm. for five or six breaths. Just be focused on that out breath, allowing the in breath to occur. Again, nice slow dissolving out breath. And anytime you find yourself caught in a thought, cut the thought and just simply gently with a great deal of self-love return to that out breath. And you will find over time that your entire life will change. So yes, in the morning before you even get out of bed, mm -hmm. I say do it at the traffic light with your eyes open. Okay. At the grocery store, instead of creating cortisol and all those negative hormones that make mm -hmm. us sick, mm -hmm. adrenaline at, at the uh, line when you're checking out, instead of getting all upset and anxious, do this practice. Simply be with your breath for several breaths until you get out to the checkout counter. And by the time you leave the store, mm -hmm. you will have created good positive hormones in yourself rather than the deleterious negative ones mm -hmm. um, that really make okay. us sick. Okay. And also at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when you're lying down before you go to sleep to just be with your breath. And I guess you probably wouldn't be surprised to find out how well this works for insomnia. I believe it. I, I mean, because just listening to you, I'm almost like at a very slow but calm pace. I'm not interrupting or anything, and I'm not trying to cut into it. I'm like, just listen. And I'm just listening to you, and I'm keeping in mind that most of the time, it's, to me, it's almost like prayer, too. You know how you pray in the morning before you go to work or whatever. You pray at night before you go to bed. But prayer is prayer, but meditation and slowing down is something else. But they almost are aligned together because automatically when you pray, you're, you know, having your conversation with your God, and yet you're still, you're calm at that level. Absolutely. Yep. It's, it's a meditative practice. And how often do, have we heard prayer and meditation together? Mm -hmm. The contemplative. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay. it's very healing for people. So no matter how sick we are or how busy, we always have our breath 24-7, and it's free. Well, as calm as you are, I can't, <laughs> I can't help it. I mean, really, it's like... Um, if you, if a person's at home with the element, and I'm going to get to this in the, the last half of the show about cancer survivors and things like that, a lot of times once you've been told that you are sick with a, a condition, especially such as cancer, your world seems like it stops that very moment when the doctor says uh, you've got cancer. Right. So what I want to do, uh, Dr. Rockwell, I'm going to take a break, but I want you to come back and elaborate on some things in reference to cancer survivors, okay? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. I'm feeling good right now. We'll be right back. If a natural disaster happened, we'd probably all meet around the grocery store. We would all meet at a bus stop. Oh, uh, we'd probably meet at our neighbor's house. Hi, this is Bernie Smilovitz, and when I'm not doing bloopers or sports or anything else, I'm always wondering what's happening at Just Ask with Marsha. And welcome back to the last half of the show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I always have good things to say about my guests. And so what, if you can see me smiling, you know that Dr. Donna Rockwell has said some wonderful things about being stressless. And I'm into it right now for sure, because every day, I don't care if you're at work or at home, or going to school, whatever, you always sometime before the end of the day have a stressful moment. Whether it's the car, whether it's the children, whether it's the spouse, the mate, whatever have you, job related, there is a form of stress going on in your life and you need to tune into yourselves and start to take in a form of meditation. So we want to include a list of some of the medical conditions that um, meditation will actually help or support. So we're not saying that it takes it away, but we do want people to be more calm when they're going through some of these things. Is that what we're saying? Also, we're saying that the production of cortisol, mm -hmm. see what happens is that our bodies think that we're in a fight or flight situation where like in ancient times we're running away from the lion, we needed to get our head out of their mouths to live. The problem is that we're living like that today so that traffic jams are giving us that same level of stress mm -hmm. and we're pumping cortisol and adrenaline through our bodies and that's what creates these illnesses. Mm -hmm. So it behooves us to learn how to be stress free or at least to reduce our stress to be our own advocates in our health and well-being. 
Okay, okay. Now, the list you have here says patients who can benefit from taking the stress reduction program are coronary artery disease, hypertension, cancer, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, diabetes type 1, irritable bowel syndrome, anxiety, asthma, respiratory disorders, uh, headache, depression, multiple sclerosis, sclerosis, I'm sorry, health-related quality of life, and one that I can't pronounce, what's, what's P-S-O-R-I-A-S-S? Psoriasis. Psoriasis. It's that patchy right. skin problem. Okay, psoriasis. I didn't know psoriasis <coughs> start with a P. Well, actually, you know, okay. that was one of the first groundbreaking psoriasis. studies that a guy named John Kabat-Zinn did 30 years ago. Okay. And what they did was they put people with psoriasis in the black boxes they stand mm -hmm. in, and they put the lights on them, but they integrated a meditation technique in that study, mm -hmm. and people got better so fast that that was the first breakthrough study showing that meditation mm -hmm. can actually help us heal so ourselves. So with psoriasis, that is a nerve condition in the first place, That's right? right. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, a lot of these. so, okay, when you say stress reduction program will help, that is to prepare people to get ready to, who have these conditions, to prepare to go through the medical uh, it certainly reg regime yes. that they're getting ready to deal with? Yes, okay. it, it certainly prepares them for that too, and it helps them be a partner in their own health. In other words, um, all the chemotherapy we're going through is mm -hmm. great, but if we learn how to reduce our stress, that's also going to help in our healing. It's going to help our bodies heal. Okay. So it's very important that we take part in that. If we stay stressed, we're only going to be pumping Speed more up. adrenaline into our body, which is what makes us sick to begin with. So cancer survivors, mainly, and I'm speaking in terms of cancer survivors mainly, because once the doctor tells you you have this dreadful disease, you automatically go into a deep depression from the very second he or she tells you that. Would you recommend this program to help a person immediately prepare for their change of life? Well, what happens, you see, is that sometimes people wait too late to get started on okay. a practice like this. And in cases where people are highly, highly anxious, it might not be a good idea to get into a meditation practice because then you're sort of too focused on the problem. So a great idea is to start before you get the cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Of course, having worked with many cancer survivors and mm -hmm. patients, mm -hmm. the idea if you're not completely anxious out of your mind is that if you can learn to integrate these stress reduction techniques into your life, you realize that you are alive right now. Mm -hmm. There is this moment. There is the next moment. And these are moments to enjoy, feel grateful for, and fully live rather than contemplating this death that's down the road that, let's face it, we all have in front of yeah. us. Right. So it's just a question of time. Mm -hmm. People start to realize, let me use every moment I have to live fully and to take this moment and be happy because nothing is wrong right now. Mm -hmm. It's a real breakthrough moment for them. Right. Now what about in the workforce? I mean, why isn't more corporations just having um, sessions and they practice it in China or certain foreign areas that uh, taking a, a moment where the whole office shuts down Absolutely. or does an exercise program or yep. something. I don't understand how coming to the U.S. we don't do those. In Japan, in fact, they right. stop and they ring a bell and everybody right. just takes a contemplative mm -hmm. moment just to mm -hmm. be still and quiet. And people are so much more productive right. when you create a stop in this vicious loop mm -hmm. of anxiety, anxiety, stress, stress. We're more intelligent, we're more emotionally intelligent, mm -hmm. we're more mature, we have more wisdom. I agree with you. It yeah. should be much more integrated into our entire fabric right. of our society. It should, it should just be one of those things, that, and you know what, and I know that it might be kind of difficult in some uh, work areas, but it should be a part of it where you got some type of break for exercise or meditation. Or yoga. Or yoga mm -hmm. or some type of massage or something that relaxes you so that you can go back and complete the eight hours successfully. Or it might increase your workload or work habits because you are relaxed at what you're doing. That's what's mm -hmm. so true. And right. that's what studies are, are proving now. And maybe more advanced thinking companies like Google, for example, as we mm -hmm. spoke about before, mm -hmm. they do have programs like this. They do have meditation halls. They have an entire room at Google just for meditation. So maybe we are going to see it down the line integrated more and more over time. 
I hope so because you know what we don't want um, the next generation to not have the opportunity to have more choices of preparing themselves for the workforce and, and dealing with the type of jobs that they want to. Every year around the same time, and I shouldn't say every year, but in quite a few years, there's always been, uh, especially around the holidays, where you read about um, the postal postal workers, you know, have, what do they call that? The, the going postal? Yeah, going postal. <laughs> okay, okay. So things like that, and Absolutely. you kind of wonder sometimes, well, what happened? It's just Christmas, or what happened? But people get depressed, deeply depressed around certain times of the year. Because they're stuck in their thoughts. Right. Because they're stuck in there. They're, they're paralyzed mm -hmm. within their own mind. Mm -hmm. And this is such a beautiful practice because it, it frees you. Mm -hmm. And you want to hear an interesting thing. They're doing this, inter integrating mindfulness meditation into prisons okay. now, all across the board, all across the country. And prisoners are reporting that even though their bodies are in jail, mm -hmm. their minds are finally free. Okay. So it's quite incredible the power we have for ourselves in how happy we can feel and how in the moment we mm -hmm. can find ourselves mm -hmm. and how we can get out of this vicious loop of negative thinking, negative thinking, negative thinking. Another thing when you sit and you examine your thoughts when you're with your breath, you can almost start to hear how negatively we speak to ourselves in our head, mm -hmm. how self-punishing we yep. are. And through this meditation practice, you become enlightened and you lighten up, you start to become kinder to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then really a massive shift occurs. No matter what chronic disease we're suffer suffering from, mm -hmm. we find that we can be happy in the moment and settled. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm smiling all the way. <laughs> okay, and really, and, and I'm thinking about it because I always tell some of my friends, you know, if you can spend money on cell phone bills or, you know, a little gadget type stuff, I'm a kind of person I believe in incorporating in my monthly routine a full body massage. And I say monthly. You might can't afford it every week and every two weeks, but once a month, get a full body massage. You know, get broke down, whereas you're like, okay, I can deal with this next month. You know, something that will give you a break. If a person can fit it in their budget to get a massage and they also start to meditate or do yoga, things like that. It's a part of the budget. It's a part of taking care of you. It's, it's, you know, it's, it can be expensive and it can be inexpensive. It depends on the person. But I believe that those things will make you a better person in your workforce area as well as at home. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. And as you're mentioning it, you know, we experience life through our five senses. That's all we have, mm -hmm. our five senses and our mind. So what you're talking about, touch, massage, or meditation, the breath, mm -hmm. you wouldn't believe how many minutes during the day we're actually holding our breath. So just to become aware of that and to breathe more deeply is really beneficial. So things like aromatherapy mm -hmm. and massage, yoga, like yep. you're saying, this is how we can become more enlivened and actually more connected to our own life. So these are wonderful ideas yeah. you have. Now, do you think that Buddhism is a part of that too? Because um, I know Buddhism has meditation, deep meditation is. So do you think that sometimes people mix uh, meditation along with Buddhism, even though they're two different channels? Well, what's interesting is that Buddhism um, and Buddhist psychology is what this is all based on. And there's, what they say is that it doesn't matter what religion you are, Buddhist psychology okay. is perfect for it because it's really just about breath. There's no notion of God or any um, higher power. It's really about learning how to be in our bodies and mm -hmm. communicate and experience life through our five senses. Okay, okay. Well, Dr. Donna Rockwell, you give him two of my senses today, the wake-up call, okay? So the rest of them will channel in this evening. I want to thank you so much, okay? And will you come back and join us? Absolutely. It's been such a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. I really, I felt good today. I really felt good today. And not like ladies and gentlemen, I don't feel good every day, but today was special because, you know, she gave me a chance to rethink for myself. If I thought something bad today, if I start off my day with a negative thought, I cut it. Okay, so you learn to cut some of your negative thoughts during the day, and I hope that you'll tune back into us again. If you have a question, uh, please feel free to email us at justastalkshow.org, especially if you have a question for Dr. Donna Rockwell. You can contact us by website, and that's just as I'm sorry, justastalkshow.org. I'm your host, Marsha Florence, and what do I always say? If you know someone with a disability, or if you just have a general question, don't be afraid to ask Just Ask. I'm your host. Thank you. Thank you.